This is Alabama Politics with Steve Flowers, an in-depth interview with Alabama's top political newsmakers. Now, from the studios of Troy University, here is Steve Flowers. I'm Steve Flowers, and welcome to Alabama Politics. Folks, we're very fortunate not to have as our guest one of my old friends in Alabama politics and one of the legends of Alabama politics. You know, folks, when Alabama political history is written years from now, uh, the gentleman sitting with me tonight, John McMillan, will go down in history as one of the most uh, legendary office holders and, and public servants in the state of Alabama. He has been uh, a member of the House of Representatives from his native Baldwin County. Uh, then he went to be Fob James' conservation director uh, during the Fob James first administration. And then from there, he headed the Alabama Forestry Commission for 20 or 25 years. And then he became Agriculture Commissioner of Alabama, elected two four-year terms, eight years as Agriculture Commissioner. Then he was elected State Treasurer uh, and now he has left the uh, state treasurer to be head of the new Cannabis Commission in the state of Alabama. We're glad to have John McMillan with us today. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. It's great to be back with you. John is a legend. Uh, what I want to do is, is for, for this show for posterity, uh, you know, we've had this show before where you've been in different constitutional offices as Agriculture Commissioner and Conservation Director and, and, and State Treasurer. And we've talked about this briefly, but I, I want to talk about your lifetime history. Uh, tell our viewers about growing up there in Baldwin County. Your family was from there before Alabama was a state, and actually you were named for a governor. That's right. John Murphy, right. who was one of your ancestors. Go back to y'all's roots from Baldwin County, and you and Steve, your brother, who has been in the state legislature for 43 years now, <laughs> retiring. Uh, what a brother town, a twin brother. Anyway, tell, go back to Baldwin County. Tell them about your roots and then how you got into politics. And well, you were on the county commission before you enlisted. I was, yeah. We, uh, we, uh, we were blessed to grow up in a small community. We Stockton. Were, we were either uh, Stockton, either uh, related or, or related by marriage or something with just about everybody in town. Uh, it had a great school, uh, uh, one through nine grade school there. Uh, good education, background, and all of those kind of things. But yeah, our, our family, and I looked this up after you told me you wanted to talk about it, both the Murphy side and the Macmillans uh, came from the, uh, the Carolinas, South Carolina, uh, the Murphy side, and North Carolina, the Macmillan side, uh, between 1815 and 1820. And it's really kind of interesting. On both sides, uh, Murphy yeah, and uh, And actually, they both came into Monroe County. That's really how uh -huh. they how they got connected. Monroe may have been part of Baldwin at that time. You know, I don't know, yeah, but it was up there yeah, around uh -huh. the, what's now the Monroe uh, Clark County line. But anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, one of them, the Macmillan, made it on down, and and, and later married a uh, married a Murphy. But uh, but Governor Murphy was a pretty interesting guy. He was born in North Carolina, uh, went to college and law school in South Carolina. And interestingly enough, served as secretary of the Senate in South Carolina and was a trustee at the University of South Carolina before he came to Alabama. And then in Alabama, uh, he served on the, uh, the state, first state uh, constitutional convention, 1819, I guess it was. Isn't that right? And, I think so. And then, uh, and, and then he served uh, as a senator and in co as a governor and in Congress a couple of terms in Congress. So before he uh, was governor. Before he was governor and after he was governor. In Alabama, I think he was congressional delegate. One term in Congress. From, yeah. from what would be now Baldwin uh, County. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, he was uh, he was an active guy, and I don't know whether it's in the genes or not. Did you? Have, he was your great grandfather, wasn't he? No, my great great. Okay, so you didn't know anybody. Do you yeah. know anybody who would remember anything about him? No, or? but fortunately, we've got uh, at least three cousins that have done a really good job keeping up with this genealogy and and family history and all of that sort of thing. So, so we do have a lot of information about. You know, John, actually, Baldwin County has got a good many current day elected statewide officials. Uh, you and Steve, uh, John, you, the, uh, you're of course, the lead dog, but Steve McMillan, your brother, succeeded you in the House seat, been there 43 years. Lynn Stewart 
was yeah. a circuit judge and also on the state Supreme Court Chief Justice. And there was another judge on the Supreme Court from Baldwin County recently. Judge Bishobs. By That's the right. Pam, Pam That's right. Bishobs uh -huh. was on the court at one time. I may have told you this in the past. Oh, Ricky Rhodes and I were in school together. Yeah, he named you Tree. He did. He <laughs> gave me the nickname Tree. He sure did. He and Robin were there when I was, and what a great couple. Uh, now, did y'all, when growing up in Stockton, was there actually a school in Stockton? You went on to Bay Manette to the high school. We went to, uh, once we finished the ninth grade, we went to Bay Manette, 10, 11, 12. That's what I thought. John, you know, we've talked about this in the past shows. In, when I was going to school in the fourth grade, and we studied Alabama history, they would zero in on Baldwin County, and it was a unique county because they, most of the state had certain crops like like peanuts or yeah. regions, whatever. But the, but Baldwin County was known as settled by Irish people, which makes sense that the Murphys and Macmillans were Irish descent. Your ancestors, mm -hmm. which mine were too, most people who settled Alabama. Mine came to southeast Alabama, uh, but they were the same heritage. They were Scotch Irish from the Carolinas. Yeah, that's who settled Alabama mostly. Yeah, many who came through Georgia too. It, they had, yeah, they, yeah, but the folks in North Alabama, their ancestors came down from Tennessee. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a lot of Church of Christ. They would come down, but Huntsville, their area, but our area of the state, I'd say Montgomery South, was all Scotch Irish from the Carolinas. But what I was going to ask you, it, when we studied that, they would concentrate and say Baldwin County is a potato growing place. It was. And I remember yeah. from earlier shows you telling me that you do remember potato growing, and y'all would stop football practice or something in the fall to pick potatoes. They, the schools uh, were in and out uh, the, for the school year based on uh, being able to get those kids in those potato fields picking up potatoes. It wasn't automated. Yeah. Like so much of it is now. Well, you know, John, that is interesting because you think about a county has changed. I'm sure Shelby would be a similar county because the Shelby County you and I knew growing up was just nothing but a rural agricultural oh, yeah. county. Yeah. That the, that Butch Ellis's family out of Columbiana was the biggest of the place. But you remember a Baldwin County that was nothing but a sparsely populated timber and agricultural county. That's right. I mean, somebody who came to Baldwin County now, it's a bedroom community. It's the fastest growing county in the state. Yeah, it's unbelievable, <coughs> and particularly around the coastal area because, you know, I, I remember when there was a paved road to the dead end of 59, and that was it. There wasn't anything but sand down there mm -hmm. uh, when we were Nobody kids. would go to the beach, were they? Not much. Uh -uh. Uh, if you had a house, you had to carry your water and your groceries and everything else on your back <laughs> uh, from where that pavement ended to the house. It's a different ball in Canada than, than, than you grew up in, isn't it? Though? Oh, yeah. It's just Fairhope and Daffy just grown like weeds. Yeah, Spanish Fort, that whole eastern shore area is just phenomenal. And it's now, it's really now pushing further east out into the uh, more central parts of the county. Every time I go down there, I almost get lost because there's a new subdivision going if it <laughs> hadn't been in 90 days. Do you get down there much? You spend most of your time in Montgomery. Uh, yeah, I don't get down there. And of course, when I was Department of Agriculture, I traveled all over the state a lot more than we're traveling now. We are really focused on a few things with the Cannabis Commission. Yeah. John, back to, let's go back after you left the legislature. Uh, you served a term and a half of the, of there in the House after being on the County Commission in Baldwin County. And your twin brother Steve took your seat, and now he's been in it 43 years. But you became conservation director with Governor Fob James, and you were involved in what I think has been part of Fob James's legacy, and that is saving that oil money. Talk about it. One, one of the most significant uh -huh. things that's ever happened in this state, maybe the most significant thing, the, the fact that he was willing to preserve that and create the trust fund for it. And Governor Wallace uh, had a, another successful sale, not as, nearly as successful as the one we did, but another successful one and merged uh, that one into the one now, which incidentally, having left the treasurer's office, and that was one of the, really the main reasons I was interested in running for treasurer because I was a commissioner when we had that most successful sale. And I wanted to, uh, first of all, protect the integrity of that trust fund because Governor James and Governor Wallace were so smart. Many states along about that same time 
uh, had successful sales and just spent the money. And uh, we didn't do that. And, it's, and the trust fund itself, even after some uh, invasions of the trust fund, I'll say, uh, is still uh, approaching $4 billion. Good Lord. And uh, what did it start off as? Uh, the the sale the original that original sale was five hundred and forty nine million dollars. Which was a lot of money back then. Yeah, it sure was. But you know what? I've said this to clubs and all over the state on television that 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 gives Bob James a, a legacy. It does. It really does. Yeah. And this this year is the fortieth anniversary of that sale, I incidentally. Know. But that's that's something that will go down in history. I've said often that certain governors have have. Legacies. You go back to Big Jim Folsom's Foreign to Market Road program that yeah. left his legacy. His son Jim Jr. Only the, although he only served about a year and a half, two years as governor, him recruiting Mercedes gives him a legacy. Starting Absolutely. the automobile thing, and I would say that um, you know I say that, that uh, of course Wallace has a legacy. A lot of different ones. Of the probably the junior college thing maybe would be his biggest. Mm -hmm. one. But having said that. <coughs> that is a big thing for the state. They can give old Fob a legacy. Then you left conservation, and after that, you became head of the Alabama Forestry Association. That's, that's right. Well, that was a natural thing because your family has been in the timber business for years. Yeah, and that was another thing that appealed to me about the uh, Cannabis Commission is the opportunity to sort of get my fingers back in uh, a, a part of agribusiness. Well, let's talk about that since people don't realize this, but. Uh, explain from detail about the Cannabis Commission and how it was created. The medical, it was with the medical part of the Medical Marijuana Act. That adds another department uh, uh, heading to your career. You've been conservation director, head of the Alabama Forestry Association, uh, agriculture commissioner for eight years, state treasurer, and now you have the, the first head of the new Cannabis Commission. Take us from ground zero by Dr. Melson passing that legislation and all that, everything. Uh, okay, and and remember that, I, I call him the grandfather of this now, uh, Representative Ball uh, had the initial uh, medical cannabis legislation with Carly's Law for the research at UAB. But anyway, and he was he was also an instru uh, instrumental part of this one. But Senator Melson was the one that, that this past year that really stepped in there and led that effort and did a great job. It's a very, uh, people don't realize how comprehensive that piece of legislation is. It, I've never seen a piece of legislation. It's over a little over 100 pages, 104, I believe, and it just lays out almost everything. Uh, and, of course, there's some problems in it. You always have that uh, with co that comprehensive legislation. But it, it set up a 14-person uh, commission that are appointed by the different uh, state authorities, the governor, lieutenant governor, speaker, pro tem, and, and those kind of things. Um, and actually, it is an outstanding commission. It, it, the law even specifies how many got to be lawyers, how many got to be doctors, how many got to be oncologists, uh, researchers. And how many is on that board? Uh, Fourteen. Two, uh -huh. Twelve voting members and two that are non-voting members. Uh, is the governor on it or something? The governor appoints uh, uh, four, I believe. And who appoints uh, the other four? Uh, uh, Lieutenant governor. Maybe two or three, the speaker, uh, a couple, the present pro tem of the Senate, a couple. That that's all. I thing. noticed old Steve Stokes from Dothan's. Like on he's actually chair, uh, chair. Uh, the, the commission elected him chairman at uh -huh. their first meeting. So yeah, and he's he's the oncologist on that, uh -huh. and has had experience with his practice in Florida of uh, recommending medical cannabis. So he, his practice extends beyond Dothan into the state of Florida. That's right. I didn't realize that. Yeah, and I've known him since he came to Dothan. Yeah, they're, they're, and even right down to the different illnesses or sicknesses that the medical cannabis can be recommended for, is, there's a list in the legislation. So, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really well, specific. Gonna, anybody, let me just say this, anybody uh, that has an interest in it, that wants to read that legislation, which is what I would recommend, go to the, go to our website. It's amcc.alabama.gov. And uh, the legislation is, is there on that website, and I think people will find it interesting. So there's 14 members on that thing, 12 voting. They select you to be the chairman. 
How big a staff do you have? Like you have law enforcement people, the, the police, the, like the ABC or something? Yeah, that's another part of it. Well, let me. Uh, the the law specified that the commission would would uh, hire a director and an assistant director, and then we had we hired. Uh, actually brought three folks with me that had been with me at agriculture and at treasury uh including daniel autry who's the assistant director he's a lawyer too he's an he's an attorney and how old uh, a guy he's ken and george McMillan. uh he and george uh are first cousins on the other side of the family uh, -huh. uh but anyway uh and then in this uh, the legislation specifies that we will either uh work jointly with or have a memorandum of understanding with uh uh, revenue, who's going to collect the taxes, or Leah, who's going to be responsible for law enforcement and, and record keeping, the medical association, the Me association of medical examiners. Uh, we got to have about the two things we are really doing right now. Uh, one, we've just gone through the contract review process and have an attorney working on the rules and regulations, and then uh, in parallel with that getting uh, five or six, I believe it may be even six, databases put together. And all of this is real time consuming. Uh, state government, in, in, and I call it, uh, is somewhat clumsy. Uh, and there's good and bad in that. And when you're trying to start up a, an agency like we are and get things in place, it sure seems like it drags on forever when you got to go through the administrative procedures and contract review and all of those different things to get things moving. You know, uh, but now y'all license stores to to, to who That's, sells them. There, there are a number of licenses that will be addressed in this rules and regulations process, and it's like a cultivator's license, uh, uh, a processor's license, a dispensary license, uh, s several of those, integrator license. Uh, so those are all different licenses that uh, that we will be able to allow people to apply for, hopefully, uh, late next fall. Uh -huh. So nobody's going to get licensed to do it yet. No, that's, and that's a confusing thing. A lot of people, uh, I, I mentioned our website, uh, we were just looking at that yesterday, and over 6,000 people have visited our website since in the month of October. What about the CBD stores? What, they end up, isn't that some kind of marijuana? That, uh, it, it's a derivative of hemp. Okay. And so the industrial hemp that we already had, uh, and that's this has confused been the people too because uh -huh. that's fairly recent. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's a whole different deal. Uh, the the active ingredient in uh, in cannabis uh, or marijuana, as it's commonly known, is THC, and the THC content of industrial hemp is below, well below okay. what it is for medical cannabis and other. Air. So these CBD stores are selling, they're selling hemp. It's not really marijuana. Right, it's uh -huh. a derivative of, uh, uh -huh. of a lower grade uh, class of, okay. of hemp. Uh -huh. But, and, and it's it's very confusing. And, Did you uh, know about this stuff before you became head of this thing? Well. Or you didn't learn more about it? I learned a lot about uh, why we, we, we initiated and passed the legislation, helped pass the legislation for industrial hemp. Uh -huh. uh, and it's when a whole other story when we were at agriculture. Okay. So we knew that part of it pretty darn well. Uh, we didn't, in fact, uh, I didn't really even keep over this legislation. Honestly, I didn't think it would pass, and I can't honestly can't tell you today if I'd been in the legislature how I would have voted because I didn't hear any of the discussion or uh -huh. read any of the materials or anything. But I was when I was approached about uh, possibly applying for this director's job. Uh, and I was only going to do it if Daniel was willing to come with me, particularly Daniel. But all because he knows about folks. this subject. Uh, well, and he's attorney, and uh -huh. and uh, and we did a good bit of research before. Was we, he over in ag? He, he was at ag and at treasury. Oh, he and, followed you to treasury, right? Too. Okay. And we did a, a a good bit of research before we even decided that I should apply for it. Uh -huh. So uh, we learned a lot, and we're still learning a lot. It's a sharp learning curve because there's nobody in Alabama that. Legally, has had a lot of experience <laughs> with this. Uh, so That's anyway, it's, but it's coming along. We're optimistic. Uh, a number of states are into it now. Uh, uh, our our role is not going to be to grow this into uh, so-called recreational marijuana, or now the term the the industry is using is adult usage. 
uh, that's not on our radar at all. We're looking at getting this legislation up and running and providing medical cannabis for doctors to be able to recommend to their patients, and the doctors all have to be certified. That's the reason we're working with the medical association and examiners is uh, all that process, all that specified in the legislation. Well, John, where will people get the, they have to have a prescription? You got back to that. We don't call it a prescription. It's a recommendation uh, okay. from a doctor that it, that is certified by So a doctor has to give someone a recommendation and to get this marijuana. Right, and then that's where Leah comes in. We're working with them for a, uh, a database, and the, the patients will be issued a card, somewhat like a driver's license, for example. But you get into just all kind of areas of security. An officer in the field that stops somebody has got to be able to determine that they are legitimate. That's not a counterfeit card and all uh -huh. that sort of stuff. So we're a long way from getting there. Uh, and so it'll be maybe a year before people can get this stuff. Oh, it'll be, it, it'll be um, in, in our opinion right now, as we talk to different people, like just how long it takes to set up a database and everything. Once you get through the legislative uh, requirements with administrative procedures and, and uh, the rules and regulations to uh, uh, legislative services and all that, that's a three or four month process. Mm -hmm. uh, we're told by some of these uh, potential contractors that we'll use who are working in other states that we could be talking about six to eight months just for them to get databases put together mm. because you got you got to be able to and have security to control you know the doctors will be able to access it uh, the law enforcement has to access it because we do and all of that but now this is a good question and I'm glad you brought it up about the dispensary yeah. the, the dispensary won't will not go and is not allowed because of the FDA Federal Drug Administration doesn't approve any of this from the federal level so it, it cannot be sold in what we would call a traditional drugstore. It has to come from a dispensary that's a retail uh, agency, store, whatever you want to call it, that's set up just for dealing with medical Well, that's what these CBD stores may be anticipating being the, and being the place they get that. Uh, I, 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 I doubt it, but, okay. but it, that's possible. Uh, uh -huh. That's a, uh, uh, and I'll say this, I, and I don't want to get too far off in, on that subject, but I've come to believe with what we've learned, what I've learned uh, with the cannabis business, that uh, it concerns me greatly. We got CBD just pouring in here with no regulation. Uh, nobody knows any, no testing about the purity or the levels of, uh, 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 of the drugs in it and any of that kind of stuff, additives, anything. They could so, be added. They could be putting uh, marijuana in there. Uh, uh, I, so I'm. Uh, I, that's one thing. If the legislature, and there's some portions of this bill, anything that comprehensive that do need to be looked at, and we're going to talk to Senator Melson about that. But uh, at some point, I, uh, somebody needs to be regulating CBD. Yeah, uh, we've got some so. really good folks in Alabama uh, that are that are making CBD products. In fact, I've got my wife trying one right now for arthritis. It's an Alabama-made product because I'm confident in it. Uh -huh. But I'm concerned about, uh, just like this vaping business, man, that scares me to death. You walk in a convenience store and you see a wall like this with I don't know how many different vaping products and there's no telling what's in that, some of, some of that stuff. Uh -huh. You're right. It could be some kind of marijuana and some other It'll stuff. It be anything. And, we, and our law does not allow uh, I will always very strict on the medical cannabis about h how the utilization is done with either capsules or uh, mm -hmm. tincture, which is basically dr drops under your tongue, uh, and those kind of things. No edibles, no flower utilization. That's like the raw material more, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So uh, again, if any of our viewers are interested in this, I recommend highly reading that bill and seeing mm -hmm. uh, what all it is entailed in it. John, uh, well that that's interesting. It could be a while before everything gets moving. Definitely. Um, changing back to your career, though, as um, a legislator, uh, conservation director, agriculture commissioner, head of the Forestry Association, and the state treasurer, and now cannabis. Uh, I don't think you've had enough time at cannabis to say what it would be rewarding, but if you had to describe 
your different roles in those statewide positions, uh, which do you think has been most rewarding if you're sitting around talking to your grandchildren about your days <laughs> in politics or something? They say, Granddaddy, what, what do you think, what was your biggest accomplishment and what was the most thing you did most for the state? What area, the ag or the well, treasure or the or conservation? Or Steve, I, I really enjoyed all of it. And I am so blessed that the people have given me the opportunity to serve in these different areas, uh, as well as the governors, because I also served 14 years on state personnel board. That's right. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, that would be my, my first thought. My second thought would be, uh, if I and, and it may be because it's the most uh, recent, it, conservation was a big job, uh, but we were focused there more on what we could accomplish legislatively. Uh, we had a highly su successful short tenure there for conservation legislation, particularly with respect to uh, to game and fish. But I would say I would say it have to be agriculture because that. Uh, agency, frankly, was in terrible disarray, not from the state employees that are out there. Most of them are still there and, and still very dedicated people, and I think, I think and hope things are going well out there. Uh, but that agency uh, had some real issues, not only uh, from current events that were compounded by 15% proration, if you remember. Mm -hmm. We lost 25% of our employees. Right. And I remember that fifteen million dollars mm -hmm. of the budget. I saw fifteen percent. Uh, I forget how many million, but two, three million. But uh, there were so many things that could be done there to update things that were not updated. You know, like mm -hmm. uh, equipment. Uh, some of the equipment, for example, in the uh, in our seed lab, which which takes care of germination and evaluating and grading the quality of seeds and all of that. We had equipment in there that our uh, folks were having to rely on that was purchased before there was even a state uh, mm. uh, inventory system, for example. Mm -hmm. So so we just had some, I would say, there more because of the opportunities we had to do some things, and we wound up with eight years to, to get a lot of it done. So that was, I'd say that was probably the most rewarding. Well, John, our time's up. Uh, I appreciate you taking time to be with us today. Folks, our guest tonight has been uh, Legendary statewide official uh, John McMillan, who's been conservation director, agriculture commissioner, forestry association head, and state treasurer, and now cannabis chairman. Uh, we thank you for taking time to be with us, and we thank you viewers for watching. Hope you tune in next week for Alabama Politics. Thank you. Thanks, Steve.